Police release image of suspect after human remains found in suitcases. Police have released an image of a suspect on the loose after human remains were found in two suitcases left by Clifton Suspension Bridge. In a press conference, detectives from Avon and Somerset Police said the suspect was taken to the bridge by a taxi and that the taxi driver is working with officers investigating the discovery. The vehicle has also been seized. The suspect is described as black with a beard, wearing a black Adidas baseball cap, black jeans, a black jacket and black trainers with thick white soles. He also had a black backpack and was wearing a gold earring. Acting Bristol Commander Vix Hayward Mellon said the suspect set off in the direction of Lee Woods after abandoning the suitcases. She said the force's immediate priority is to locate the man who took the suitcases to the bridge, identify the deceased, and locate next of kin. Specialist crime scene investigators are currently examining the bridge and surrounding area, and the bridge will remain closed while these inquiries are conducted. At this stage, we are not aware of any current risk he poses to the wider public. However, if anyone sees him, we advise them not to approach him and please do call 999 immediately. This is a very disturbing incident and I fully recognize the concern it will cause for all communities. We currently have an increased presence of officers in the area and I encourage anyone who has any concerns to please do speak with one of the team," she said. A post-mortem examination is taking place on Thursday evening, with the police refusing to comment on questions about how many victims were found and the age and sex of the human remains. Police have been in contact with the family of missing man Jack O'Sullivan to inform them of the incident but said no parallels are actively being drawn. The 23-year-old was last seen at about 3.15 a.m. on March 2 in the area of Brunel Lock Road and Brunel Way in Bristol. Officers previously said they received reports of a man seen acting suspiciously on the bridge just before midnight on Wednesday. Police arrived at the scene within 10 minutes, but the man had vanished, leaving a suitcase behind. A second suitcase was found nearby a short time later, Avon and Somerset police said. An immediate search of the area was carried out by officers on the ground with the support of the National Police Air Service and HM Coast Guard. The Clifton Suspension Bridge has been closed today due to the police activity. <coughs> Crocodile shot dead after killing girl, 12 years old, in Australia. A 14-foot-long crocodile has been shot dead after killing a 12-year-old girl in Australia. The huge reptile, believed to be at least 30 years old, attacked the girl as she was swimming with her family last week, leading to efforts by rangers to hunt it down. Her death was the first fatal crocodile attack in the Northern Territory since 2018 and has rekindled debate on whether more should be done to curb the crocodile population. It is estimated that there is currently one crocodile for every 2.5 people in the region and the protected species has encroached on human populations in the area. Wildlife rangers have been attempting to trap or shoot the crocodile since the girl was attacked last week in Mango Creek near Palumpa. They shot the animal on Sunday after getting permission from the region's traditional landowners. Saltwater crocodiles are considered a totem by many indigenous Australians. Police said analysis had confirmed the animal was the one that killed the girl. The girl's death came weeks after the Northern Territory approved a 10-year plan to contain croc numbers, lifting the rate of calling near human habitat from 300 to 1,200 a year. The Northern Territory government said after the latest fatality that crocs could not be allowed to outnumber humans. Harvey Weinstein facing investigation over additional violent sexual assaults. Harvey Weinstein is facing an investigation over additional violent sexual assaults, prosecutors in New York say. Speaking at a hearing in New York State Criminal Court in Manhattan on Tuesday, prosecutor Nicole Bloomberg said they will seek a new indictment, adding the additional assaults allegedly committed in Manhattan were still within the statute of limitations to be charged as crimes. 
The 72-year-old film producer's landmark 2020 New York conviction saw him handed a 23-year prison sentence and kickstarted a global hashtag MeToo movement, but in April it was overturned by the state's highest court. A retrial is yet to be announced. It was ruled the original hearing had been prejudiced by egregious improper rulings by the judge, including a decision to let women testify about allegations that were not part of the case, violating his right to a fair trial. Weinstein has denied having non-consensual encounters with anyone. Speaking on Tuesday, Weinstein's lawyer Arthur Adala said it was unfair for prosecutors to seek to add additional victims to the case after the conviction was overturned. Mr. Adala accused the prosecution of using delay tactics to keep Weinstein behind bars. Ms. Bloomberg denied that was the case, saying, as we said in 2020, there were women who were not ready to proceed with the legal process. Some of those women are now ready to proceed. Weinstein has remained in jail because he was also convicted in Los Angeles in 2022 of another rape, for which he was sentenced to 16 years in prison. He is also appealing against this conviction. Just days after the New York ruling was overturned, Weinstein was taken to hospital, with his lawyer describing him as somewhat of a train wreck health-wise but still sharp as a tack mentally. Weinstein has had cardiac issues, diabetes, sleep apnea and eye problems for some time and was in constant pain, according to Mr. Adala. Weinstein is currently being held in solitary confinement at New York City's Rikers Island Jail. His now overturned 2020 conviction was a milestone for the hashtag MeToo movement, in which women accused hundreds of men in entertainment, media, politics and other fields of sexual misconduct. Once considered the most powerful man in Hollywood producing hit movies including Shakespeare and Love and Pulp Fiction Weinstein has admitted his past behavior caused a lot of pain, but has maintained his innocence throughout, saying any sexual activity was consensual. Ryan Reynolds says it's a dream to team up with best friend Hugh Jackman for new film. Ryan Reynolds says it's a dream come true to finally get the chance to work alongside best friend Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. The Deadpool actor penned multiple scripts and versions of the film and pitched them to Marvel Studios chief executive Kevin Feige. On his last attempt of getting it over the line and a phone call from Jackman, Deadpool and Wolverine was created. It's a dream come true for me. I mean, it's something, right? Since day one of playing this character in this way, I want it to be, you know, standing next to this guy. And for so long, it seemed like that was not going to be a possibility. And, somehow, someway, you know, love prevails, he said. Jackman's character Wolverine died honorably in the 2017 film Logan after the Australian actor decided to retire from the role. He told on the red carpet of a sneak peek event in London that was a decision he quickly regretted. The first seat in my brain was watching Deadpool 1 about three days after announcing my retirement and I went, oh, hang on a second, oops, he said. He added, literally I can tell you the date, August 14th, 2022. And it wasn't my head, it was just my heart saying I really want to play this part opposite Deadpool, and so it is a dream come true. In 2019, Disney acquired 20th Century Fox, making Deadpool and Wolverine official members of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Deadpool and Wolverine is in cinemas July 25th. Deadpool and Wolverine director Sean Levy says blending the two production companies cinematically came as a challenge. There obviously was great interest in making a Deadpool movie within the MCU, but it's tricky threading the needle because it needed to be grounded and realistic enough to be adaptable. It's not space creatures saving the universe. It's very much authentic and raw, but it's also the MCU, so you need it upscaled, he said. One addition that will excite fans of the original comics is seeing Wolverine in his iconic yellow suit. I don't really understand why no one did it before me, but I'm really happy that no one did it before me because there's pent-up generational hunger to see this actor as this iconic character in this iconic suit.
So, for whatever reason, they never did it before and it makes yet another reason why this movie is so unique. The Devil Wears Prada Sequel in Development A sequel to The Devil Wears Prada, the hit 2006 film featuring Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway, is reportedly in development. One of the original screenwriters Aline Brosh McKenna is in talks to write the follow-up, which reportedly follows Streep's character, magazine editor Miranda Priestley, as she confronts the decline of print publications in the digital age, Variety reported. It is unclear how many of the original cast members may return for the sequel, which US news outlet Deadline reported will be made by Disney. However, the film's original director David Frankel and producer Wendy Feinerman are in talks to return, Deadline added. Hathaway, who played the role of one of Priestley's assistants, told E! News in March she was skeptical a continuation of that story was ever gonna happen. Emily Blunt starred as Priestley's other assistant in the film, which was based in the New York office of a fictional high-end fashion magazine. Stanley Tucci also featured as Priestley's long-suffering deputy. The film was based on the book of the same name by Lauren Weisberger, a former assistant to Vogue's editor-in-chief Anna Winter. Streep won a Golden Globe and an Oscar nomination for her role as the withering editor, while it was a breakthrough film for Hathaway and Blunt. The three women have frequently reunited, most recently at the SAG Awards in February. The boys' octopus sex scene came as total shock to TV star. Actor Chase Crawford says a scene in which he had to simulate sex with an octopus came as a total surprise and almost led him to have a panic attack. The 38-year-old, who rose to fame playing Nate Archibald in Gossip Girl, has played one of the lead characters in all four series of the satirical superhero show The Boys on Amazon Prime. However, he had no idea his role as Kevin Moskowitz, aka The Deep, whose powers include breathing underwater and the ability to talk to sea animals, had such a demanding scene in store when he first took on the role back in 2019. Speaking to Rolling Stone, he said he might have thought twice about taking on the part if he'd known about it. On seeing it in the script for episode 6 of season 3 for the first time, Crawford said he thought, oh god, how's this going to work? I was in total denial about it. And then it got 24 hours out from the first day I had to shoot it and I almost had a panic attack. Crawford says he called showrunner Eric Kripke, working through the way the scene would be shot, asking, how are we gonna do this? What are the angles gonna be? How naked do I have to be? He adds that in the end just one shot was changed, and the filming went well. The octopus, which is named Ambrosius, is voiced by Oscar-winning British actress Tilda Swinton. While Crawford says it was a closed set, when only the essential crew members are allowed to stay on set due to the filming of a sensitive scene, he says the production's intimacy coordinator was not involved with the filming. He admits, just the act of picking up the octopus and getting a wet octopus in the bed was so funny and weird. Crawford says the long gap between filming and when the episodes air also added to his anxiety. It doesn't come out for a year almost after you filmed it, and you're like, how is this going to be received, he explains. However, he says fans have largely loved his performance, and sometimes even approach him to say so. I saw someone at the gym the other day and he was like, I'm actually going to show you this. And it was him in a deep costume with a pink octopus wrapped around him at Comic-Con or something. Everyone loved it, man. I get ragged on a little bit, but it's good. <laughs>